What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 2 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Malekith and Nagarond Incorporated campaign. We here at Nagarond Inc. are dedicated to providing equal opportunity misery to all who join our wonderful organization, and all those who don't. Anyway, as we saw last time, Malekith was able to destroy the first of the Beastmen factions that was around the Altar of Darkness, which is obviously a boon because Beastmen factions are just so annoying to deal with. Uh, this will mean that Malekith now has to choose where to go to next, and our next war will most likely be with the Slaughterhorn tribe. I once again want to get rid of all the Beastmen, and while Valkia and the Mung do most definitely pose a threat, I would like to hope that the other Dark Elves up here can hold them off for at least a little bit of time while we take what we need down here. Uh, before we get started, one quick note with regards to scheduling. I usually just post whenever and how long ever the uh, algorithm requires me to do so. But I think this time around I'm going to do a sort of a threshold thing. So if this episode, for example, gets, let's say, I don't know, 300 likes and 30 comments, uh, we will get either two longer episodes or three shorter episodes today, as in in one day. Faster scheduling with that regard. And then we drop below the threshold, we will adjust, etc., etc., etc. That's what I'm trying, so that's what we're going with. Anyway, Malekith, you are are moving down to Nagarond this turn, and then hopefully afterwards to Cag Grief. We also need to make sure that we get our first Black Ark up and running as fast as possible, which requires the Slave Pen building, which we will thus build here at Harkaldra. Uh, that is you, Slave Pen. And then you know what? While we want that Artisan's House here, probably, we're going to get rid of it right now. We're going to build a wall here. If Malekith is going to be far away from the northern provinces, we essentially essentially have to be wary of an attack suddenly from Valkia or the Mung, which will probably mean that the Harkaldra will need to at least to some degree be able to defend itself. Next up, is there anything else that we need to do? Ooh, yes we do. We want to get our first master on the field. We got Malicious. Uh, recruit for Death Hags. Okay, that's terrible. Spiteful gives you, ooh, makes you a stronger fighter and buffs up weapon strength in the army. Okay, I like that. And I think that's actually better than Disciplined. Don't get me wrong, the leadership in melee attack is quite swell, uh, especially early in the game, but ever since the nerf on Discipline when it was 2 and 2, uh, this has been a lot weaker, so let's go for Spiteful instead. Alrighty, plus this will help out in uh, buffing Malekith himself. Also, we have Kuran at home, so Kuran Darkhand, commander of the Black Guard of Nagaron, you definitely have to be in Malekith's army. Oh, we also have a skill point. Uh, probably don't need to apply it right now, but while we are here, Kindle Flame for you so that you can use the passive fire bonus to buff up the Burning Head and whatever else you cast. Outpost available is relevant to us, and I believe we're good with regards to Diplo. Oh, we could do a defensive alliance with Gron, but I don't see why we would. All it'll do is force us into unnecessary wars, especially if Grimbrindle decides to uh, decides to attack them. Anyway, that's that for this turn, so let's end it, and let's... Oh, no, you know what? We're going to declare war on you right now, actually. Here's the thing. Call allies to help. Grumbrindle is not at war with anybody, which means it should be fairly easy... Yeah, it's fairly easy to force him into a war, plus AI is programmed to not like being at peace, and if it is at peace, it will try to declare war, and because we're sharing so many borders, it's fairly likely, I think, that he would have tried to declare war on us, even with our uh, positive relationship, especially as long as we don't have any kind of agreements between us. So there is that. Alrighty, and we are moving to Nagarond next. Faction destroyed to Cage Breakers. You, Malekith, are going to move right... Huh. Hmm. I have a thought. Another thought. We should move you to Nagarond, but we also need to... Oh, shipwreck. Uh, swell. Uh, here's what we'll do. We're gonna pop you. Recruit Lord. Uh, cheapest lord is going to be Beastmaster. Say you, Tactician. Then we're going to have you recruit for Malekith two Dark Shards with shields. Malekith is going to move in March Stance into Nagarond itself because we want to make use of the fact that we have the Read Dark Portents thing to start our next turn here and thus move further. Furion, you 
Oh, uh, no, not Furion. Uh, Quran, rather, you're going to join Malika's army. And we have enough space exactly for these two Dark Shards. Then, next turn, we summon our first Black Arc. This turn, we get a wall up and running, or a watchtower up and running here. And we also do want to trade Rakdo Gorge to you. In fact, how much is this worth to you? Oh, wow, you don't want to give up Temple of Cain, huh? Alrighty, Rakdo Gorge. 37. Pretty good. Not good enough to get a defensive alliance, but uh, still pretty good. You know what we could try to do? Not give it to him right now, but instead, after Furan is done recruiting, send him around like this through Recto Gorge to hopefully occupy Shrokdak Mount while Malekith moves through Kaggrief, Kragroth Deep, and then down to destroy Torox for good. Whether that works out or not remains to be seen, but, uh, well, we'll give it a shot. Uh, everything here does not matter, and this is a suspiciously quick turn, but the turn it is, so let's go next turn. Gotta get that Black Ark after all. Grimrindal is still building up as well, I see. Yeah, he'll have a nice full stack. We we essentially have to force him into a war with somebody where he can put that uh, he can put that full stack to good use. You want a defensive alliance, but we do not, at least at the current time. You just keep on fighting Valkia, please. All right, Confederation, swell for the Varg and the Nal Farlings, but they're so far, far away from us that we don't care. Negative growth, oh, but it's in the Altar of Ultimate Darkness. It's not a big deal. And we, let's face it, don't really care about that much about it. You are going to transfer to Malekith these Dark Shards. And Malekith is going to head out to sea and then immediately to Hag Grief. Because he can't reach the uh, shipwreck here. And then occupy it. One of the major Dark Elf cities here, after all. Colonize. So, well, and then what we will do... Well, I guess we'll upgrade it immediately. This place should have a landmark, an early landmark. Yes, Face of Hag Grief. Income, iron, and marble. And very, very nice. This was absolutely necessary to get as early as possible. Uh, otherwise, we'll want to get another tech up and running. And I believe I said we'd be doing Founded on Tyranny next for the growth bonuses. We want to pop that sacrifice to Mathlan. And get that Black Ark up and running as well. Which will provide support to Malekith as he moves out. Uh, Black Ark, yes. So oh, expensive, though. But what can you do? And then you have the bonuses to the uh, Black Ark Corsairs. But of course you do. All right. Swell. So, uh, we can't send you to the shipwreck because you don't have an army. But, you know, later on. Now, Malekith could probably replace a few of his troops. Like, for example, his Bleak Swords, if he wants to, with Black Ark Corsairs. Though, to be fair, he does have... Uh, does have buffs to his bleak swords, or at the very least a reduction to their costs. Hmm. Huh. Line breaker buffs dark shards? Oh, that's interesting. I... Huh. Dark shards double dip. And black... And oh. That's interesting. Uh, they kept, or SFO kept the fact that black art corsairs double dip into both of these... Uh, uh, into both of these things, which makes it quite decent to get strong Black Ark Corsairs army. I, mean, I guess for your uh, for your Black Arcs, I'm just taking a look here. Shadowfire Guard, Black Guard, Halberd Unit, Legendary Unit. I take it that we get this from the Shrine of Assyrian, maybe. Shadowfire sounds Shrine of Assyrian e to me. And they have high elf abilities as well, as form ranks, no mercy, yeah, okay. Wait, no mercy is ours, isn't it? Actually, I don't remember. No, yeah, that's that's ours. And so is Sons of Nagaron, but as form ranks is most certainly not. Anyway, I guess we'll have to wait quite a bit to that to sail to Ulthuan. Anyway, that I believe is yet another turn. Quick little turns, but Furion, you can do what we were asking of you and move out this way to take Shroktek Mount and then transfer it to our dwarfen future friends. Uh, also, who are you currently at war with, Gromby? Just Torox, okay. I just wanted to double check because if he were to peace out with, Gor with Torox suddenly, even though I'm pretty sure it's not possible, I'd rather not risk it. Crone Hellebron, you want an alliance, I bet. Oh, military access, yeah, sure. Oh, we don't want an alliance, but military access we can certainly have. Also, you guys let me know your thoughts about what we... Hello. Hello, Torox. You're going for Gromby instead of us. <laughs> that's that's kind of interesting. 
but we'll take it. Uh, I guess it'll remain to be seen who wins the fight, but that doesn't mean we can't move up here and, let's say, ambush him. Uh, let's go... Ooh. Hmm. Can he reach Hagrief? He can. Can he take Hagrief? It doesn't have walls right now, so most definitely he can. Which means, I think we'll do... Well, uh, I wish I knew if he would take a direct path for it or try to move around. I feel like we should ambush with Malekith. Even though he does seem to be going for these guys right now, if he loses, to it'll be an issue. Alright, here's what we'll do. First, we'll go to the shipwreck to see what we can get out of it. Because it's right here. And then we'll come back. I'm going. Like so. And explore the island. This should be auto-resolvable. Yeah, it's pretty weak. Hopefully we don't take too much damage from it. Do we want to fight? Nah, this is a waste of our time. I'd really rather fight Torox. And 109 slaves and a decent amount of money. I think we need the slaves to get another Diktat up and running because we'll want the growth. Even though it's a decent amount of cash. We'll go slaves right now. And what was I saying? Ah, yes. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. Ooh, another 5,000 money. Uh, on Confederation. We're at 88 Witch King's Authority already, so we could, in theory, very, very shortly, subjugate our first, uh, uh, our first faction. The problem with doing this right now is it essentially forces us to upkeep two armies which we don't have the economy for yet, despite the acqu acquisition of additional territories. And on top of that, doesn't really allow these guys a chance to build up their own territory before we uh, subjugate them. And generally speaking, the... Uh uh, the Blessed Dread do pretty good in acquisition of territory, so while we could acquire them immediately, we could also wait for them to get a little bit more before we do so. And I see that Harganeth is also doing fairly nicely. And we could allow them to continue fighting. I don't know. Definitely, uh, definitely a few thoughts. Uh, let's move you back outside Hag Grief. I guess Ambush is not going to work out this turn, but we can always move towards Torox next turn. Not a big deal. Actually, nah, you can't ambush. You can, I guess, channel. Nah, but you're nearly full magic anyway. Well, get even more full of magic. Alrighty, and then, Admiral, you're, you can, I guess, move a little bit more this way. We'll still need to support when we head to Kragroth Deep, which we will hopefully uh, take, like so. And that looks good to me. Nothing to build. Let's end the turn. Let's see who wins out of this, and then I guess we head directly towards them. And, oh, I should have gone up this road instead of down this road. I was thinking we go here and then I get whatever. <laughs> we'll see. If they fail, he might run this way. Who knows? He's not gonna go for Nagarond either way because there's absolutely no way he can take it. Uh, once again, check diplomacy real quick. Oh, Flame Gullets wanna trade. Oh, that reminds me. We gotta keep moving Mr. Furion here. Furion to Shuruktak Mount and ooh. If you are no longer in Rakdo Gorge, uh, we could, in theory, trade Rakdo Gorge to Grombi right now. These guys are here. Okay, well, that's swell for them. Uh, do we trade this right now, I guess, is the question. Hmm. And we could always do so next turn. Rakdo Gorge, we could get trade agreement going. We could also get military access going instead of the trade. It's not much money. And we probably have an easier time getting the trade agreement going later anyway than we would uh, the... Uh, uh, the military axis. Would we be able to pay for a defensive alliance? No, we would not. Hmm, if we declare war on another faction, though, we might be able to... Let me think about this. You know, let's, let's give it a turn. I want to see what happens with Torox and stuff, and then it's not like, it's not like Rakdo Gorge is going anywhere, right? Well, let's see what he does. Alright, Torox, will you attack? No, Grimbrintel will attack you and kill you. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> well, you know what? A be early game beastmen versus early game dwarfs is an ugly situation for uh, a beastman. We do not want this trade agreement. Because we're going to kill them. Uh, because we want Kragroth Deep as it is part of our main uh, main stuff. Uh, quest issued, Armor of Midnight. Win a battle against High Elves. That's not going to happen right now. We're busy. Sacrifice to Mathlan, Hagrief, sure. Torox is also now much weaker. How are you guys doing? Oh, pretty okay. Convent. 
still only defensive alliance. I'm just keeping an eye on these guys because if they lose their main stack or if they lose a bunch of territories, we might be able to confederate them and take Grand for ourselves, which would be swell. Uh, I'd like to force you into another war, though, which I guess is going to be with the Ogres. Alternatively, wait, you could colonize this and trade it immediately. Hmm. I wonder how much it'll be worth to our dwarven friends. All right, let's try this thing. We're gonna put you here. Like so. We're gonna occupy Shrocktack Mount. I know it's 5,000 gold, but I'm hoping that this works out. And I know that this is an entire province that we could have, but it's only two territories, and it's really not going to be worth it that much to us, especially unpleasant climate as it is. Then, I'm gonna trade you Rakdo for the military access. Or wait, if we do this, he'd probably give us a bunch of money as well. Uh, actually, not as much money as I thought. You know what? No, military access. Uh, no, I screwed that up. Uh, trade Rakdo Gorge for military access and a little bit of cash. Like so. Now, we're going up to plus 15. Alright, I like that. Then... We trade them Shrock Tech Mount, or do we... No, I'm not going to take five turns to do that. Trade you Shrock Tech Mount, which is worth 14 to... Yeah, not quite a trade agreement. Uh, hmm. We could declare war on another faction. For example, Valkia. Or somebody else. Or we just trade it to them as a gift. Or we hold on to it. I think either one is fine. Uh, you know what, let's wait a turn. Let's see. I guess we could invest in this very slightly. We could always cancel it if uh, if it comes down to... Oh, what, what if these guys declare war on us and retake it? That would also be a problem. Huh, wait, Malekith, what the heck happened to you? Why did you lose your uh, campaign movement range? Well, that's odd. I was hoping to move here this turn, but apparently something bugged out about his, uh, his moves. Oh well. I'm gonna go here. We can't take the Circle of Destruction, we'll attack Kragroth Deep while here because we need to. And it's closer than Torox's main settlement is. And otherwise, I believe we are good to go, yes? Uh, don't bother upgrading this because I'm afraid that we'll get attacked. Skip, 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 and in turn. We'll find a proper battle soon, I'm sure. War declared between the Legion of Chaos and the Broken Wheel. Irrelevant to us as they are too far away. Malice is going to ask a trade agree- Huh. I thought we had it. Did we lose- Huh. Counter offer. <laughs> Wait, he asked for 100, now we have to give him 102? Okay, propose offer, sure. He might have lost the territory that was enabling him to trade. Because I'm at least reasonably sure we had that in the first episode, but I guess we'll see. Alrighty, Malekith, come on. And we're about to suddenly declare war on these ogres, which will mean they'll take Shrock Tech Mount, which will mean we need to trade it away. So, you are going to go right here into their territory. Like so. Slaughterhorn. Huh. The Drowned to Clark Harrod. Oh, that's not great. And it's mostly not great because we. Hmm. Actually, it's quite interesting. Wait, let me think about this. Uh, do we now align with the Drowned, or do we kill them? I have no clue. If we- oh, these guys have lost a chill road. Wait. Ah, uh, they've lost their main army. Yes, we can confederate. Uh, we can confederate Grand. That should be interesting. Wait, 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 wait. We, we can do this. Let me figure this out. We need to force you, Gromby into fighting Valkia. We are going to attack Kragroth Deep by declaring war on you. And, ooh, we can actually join the war. Grombi, join war against the Flame Gullets. 2.9, not worth much. Uh, at the same time, we trade you Shrog Tech Mount. Allowing them to maybe retake it and then us to give it to you again. We then... Well, you're probably not giving us Temple of Cain, are you? No, you're not doing that. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Near to trade agreement, we could give him 8,000 gold for it. That is not going to happen. Hmm, what else can we do here other than the Shrock Tech Man? I can't believe he wouldn't do the trade agreement for this. Uh, we could confederate now and then join war against the Valkyrie preemptively. And then have you join war, or we could get not enough money. 
or we could just do this and not give you Shrock Tech. No, that won't work because they'll um, they'll retake it. Okay, which means we do this. Do confederate with you. First, we get Defensive Alliance. Give us all your money. And then we Confederate. With nope. We go Military Alliance. Give us all your money. Success then we Confederate always. with you. Having taken said money. Then... Let's see what we have here. Uh, Valkia's right there. Millen is at zero loyalty, so we need to get him the heck out of here. In fact, you can go all the way up here. This means... Ah, oh, what do we have here? A couple of these guys. Okay, okay. Mm. I wonder if Valkia is going to attack Grand. Or Karhaldra. Harkaldra, rather. I guess it doesn't make much of a difference. Either way, we will need a, a Lord, and I guess we're going to go for Shadows of Nagarond. Mm. Although Ambush Master isn't a horrible thing to have. I do think that we have to go for a Lore of Death Lord, however. Dark Riders, Doomfire Warlocks. You know what? Let's go Shadows of Nagarond. Spirit Leech is a basic spell that you can have. You guys can't move this turn, but we'll keep you on the field and put you in the army next turn just to defend Grand, if nothing else. You should also have a turn to recruit. And I guess the question is... Hmm. Okay, wait. We will have to move the Black Ark as well. But uh, for now, you can have... Ooh, you can build Shades. Ah, they're going to take two turns. It's not going to work. Uh, let's go for... Couple regular dark shards and one dread spear. Why regular instead of shielded? Because they do considerably more damage. 30 versus 22, and chaos forces have really very little in the way of ammunition or range attacks. So there's no need to protect these guys with shields, and uh, we can favor damage instead. Then, having done that, Malekith, we're gonna have you go to Kragroth Deep after we do the trade here. So join war against the flagellants. Or do we just declare war on Valkia directly? She's going to declare war on us no matter what we do. They're, it's inescapable. We should also probably get a temporary lord up at Har... Uh, at Har Kaldra. Yeah, alright, fine. Are you at war with anybody? No. And, yeah, see, if she was at war with somebody... Actually, just out of curiosity. Huh, we can't get her to join war. Okay, we will declare war on you. And we will call Hagrieve to help, I guess. Then... Now, lots of diplomacy this time around, but uh, a very warlike diplomacy. Then we will ask you to join war against the Flame Gullets or the Legion of the Gore Queen, and at the same time trade you Shrog Tech Mount. 2.4. Perfect. All right, this works. You'll fight Valkia and the Ogres at the same time. You can have Shrog, Tuck, Shrog Tech Mount. And yes, this is what we will do. You got it. Now, what are we at here? Moving to plus 56. Oh, yeah. All right, we're, 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 we're doing it. It's it's working, people. I'm very happy. Uh, Druki first strike into Kragroth Deep. I think this should be auto-resolvable. I guess we're going north to fight Valkia, then. All right, well. Uh, decision made. Auto-resolve this... Yeah, just auto-resolve it. It's not enough troops to worry about. And hey, a fireball uh, spell thing. Uh, we don't really... Well, I don't really like magic missiles in general. However, because we have a caster with fire here already, she can most definitely make use of it. In fact, you know what? Take the Forbidden Rod, because Malik is always fighting in melee, and you are not. Uh, Warrior Bane can stay on you, I think, but we'll swap the Gold Sigil Sword out to Kuran for now. And we'll do the skill points afterwards. Oh, we do need to heal up a little bit. Now we'll see if these guys take Shrock Tech Mount. And by these guys, I mean the Ogres. Because if they do, it would be fantastic for us. And then you, Furion, I guess can move to the Circle of Destruction. And though we could also keep this a ruin while we allow Nagareth to fight it out with the Drowned. And Karant Kar, well, we go north to Valkia. Okay, then we take Admiral Yorn. And we put him right, let's say, here maybe? Can you get close enough to Gron to allow for recruitment? Can't quite tell. No, you're just too far. Damn. Okay. Uh, let's go Dread Expansion. Hmm. We could have you build troops. We can't summon another Lord here at the Great Arena, unfortunately. And we could summon a Lord at Hark Cauldra, but it may not be necessary. Do you have any items, by the way? An evil choir master. <laughs> oh, right. I forgot that the... Uh, uh, the names of a lot of stuff are really funny on the, uh, uh, on the Dark Elves Evil Choir Master. Uh, hilarious. Alrighty. 
I mean, I like how they specified that it's an evil choir master. Not just a regular choir master, but uh, an evil one. You can't you can't have non-evil things in uh, in the land of Edge. Anyway. <laughs> I love these guys so much. End the turn. Uh, let's see what uh, what the end turn brings us. The Diplo was at least working. I can't believe we're at plus 56 with Grombi. We just need a reason or some way to get the Temple of Cain back. As well as... Yes, you're going to attack this guy who was about to defect. Perfection. And then you are stuck here. Meaning she's probably going to go for the Great Arena. But that's fine. We fully expected that. And we'll have to defend Garand ourselves, which is walled up. It doesn't have its uh, gold mine build, unfortunately. Hey, another evil choir master. Raiding season. Income from raiding plus 40%. Oh my. That's quite a bit. I don't really have anybody who can raid right now, but still oh my. You two. Enter into this settlement. The great arena will fall because the defenders are barely existent. You two are going to, however, get your skill points just in case we get attacked next turn. Assuming that Valkia does have siege attack, or which she very well may have. Uh, let's get you... Let's say your melee defense is pretty high. Maybe we get you Blade Master instead of hard to hit, which is what I would usually do. And then you, I guess, are going to be the same. Yeah. Indomitable Will and Blade Master. Whereas Kuran is going for the other way because he has buffs. Uh, can we get anything else interesting here? Probably not. I'm salty about the fact that uh, the uh, Admiral can't quite reach him. And But oh well. Then, ah, yes. So the Ogres have indeed taken Shrock to Heckmount. Which means... Oh, actually. Wait, do we have a uh, mission for... Oh, we're not allied with the Dwarves. But Malice has a mission to defeat Valkia. All right. I guess we go here, take Shrock Tech, give it to the dwarfs again. Be plenty of time for and maybe First. acquire the trade agreement that way. It will mean Malekith is away from where he needs to be for an extra turn, but I don't see how we can escape it. Uh, this is all attrition-y territory. But I think we can still move up here. In fact, maybe we sack this place and allow Furion to take it, allowing Malekith to continue moving. Also, you do not need that crown of command. Uh... I can hold on to the evil choir master. <laughs> we'll give the crown of command to Kuran for now. Or actually maybe to the sorceress because she doesn't really need... Oh no, she has the ruby ring. Alright, let's give this to you. Or, wait. If you're going to defend against Valkia, and the reason suggests that you are, we will probably want... Hmm. You to get the unbreakable ability, although you may die with it, but it's a crown of command. I, I can't say I care that much about the uh, uh, that particular thing. Now, we will keep recruiting just in case they attack at uh, the Great Arena instead, so in that light, let's get two more Dark Shards, and let's get another Dread Spear. Or do we want two Dread Spears? Yeah, let's get two Dread Spears this time. Oh, man, these units are very expensive, and you do have a unit of Dark Riders, which is swelling. Ooh. I see this guy's coming up to Hark Cauldra. Okay, we're going to need to recruit another temporary lord there. Let's go with... Oh, you know what? Maybe this one. Uh, no, wait. Hmm, huh. Aren't you dead? Oh, you're probably from, uh, from the other faction. I'm wondering which lord would be better here. I guess the tyrant would give the enemy leadership reduction. Oh, you're also a tyrant, and you're tier you're level four. But maybe we don't want you to die like the others. Although by virtue of being a tier four, oh, but they did they spent it all on character skills and they didn't get uh, a burning head. Oh, come on, come on, allies. You are free though. Mm, but I think we'll get a new one. Hmm. I guess we're gonna have to go with one of these. Fleet-footed, I don't care if you die, it's just that uh, Chill Wind is going to be much more useful than uh, uh, than the other spells, and you have immediate access to it. So, yeah. Sacrifice yourself for the greater evil. Alright, and we'll go for Battle as Business as well, just to get the increased uh, money from Battle. Uh, I can't believe you're just, just too far from Grand. Huh, I wonder. If we send you around here, maybe... Hmm. Try to go over here. What if this is actually close enough to Grant? I'd really love for Grant to get Black Ark support. And I they're not gonna attack Nagaron because there's no way that they can take it. 
Ooh, maybe this will actually be close enough. Wait. It is close enough, but you can't recruit because you're in March stance, but next turn you can. Oh, just a little bit too late. It's okay, though. That works. And that most definitely works. Uh, we could pop a Diktat here, but we got three more turns until we actually need the reductions, and we could pop a Diktat here, but I think we'll save for the turn. Alrighty, let's end the turn. Let's finally get ourselves a fight here, shall we? Oh, what are you doing here? What do you want? Uh, is he trying to take Rothgar Spire? Good for him. End turn. Alright, a little bit of light on the battles this particular episode, but I think it's been a very interesting episode so far in the sense of uh, how we've done the Diplo and all of this uh, turnaround stuff. You're going to attack the settlement garrison here at the Great Arena, but, uh, well, we'll have to reclaim it. This was all... it was all going to happen anyway. They would have otherwise attacked the... Uh, uh, our allies and done all this, so it doesn't matter that they're doing this to us. As in, it's not really losses in a way. Great Arena, Spiteful Peaks, Settlement Besieged, and now you can go Dread Expansion, and you have Black Ark Support. Actually, you can move a little bit closer, I guess. These guys can't reach you anyway. Play here. I like so. Alright. Uh, I was going to build these things, but you know what? Maybe instead we... Ah, we can't reach this yet. All right, fine. Since we cannot reach here, we're going to go for Dark Elf Manors to increase Black Arc growth. We should probably continue building here. It looks like this guy has besieged us. I think that actually is fightable, so we might actually fight that. Uh, but first, Malekith, you have things to do. Uh, you are going to attack this directly in Druki First Strike. I believe this is a minor settlement, so it'll be a field battle. And, ooh, they have lead belchers. We might, uh, you know what, let's fight this. It's unlikely that we're going to have a lot of fights against the ogres, so I think we can, uh, and we can still do this one. You are going to move up here. In my stead. I guess you can also be in Druki for a strike. Or, wait. Hmm. Ah, no, you can't reach Shrock Tech Mount. Camp, rather. All right, Malekith, we're going to give you your skill points, and then we will strike. So, chill wind. No, blade wind, yes. <laughs> And Spiteful Conjuration to get the armor reduction on the enemy nearby for 20 seconds. Not horrible. Uh, let's get another point in Chillwin because we use it a lot. And we're probably going to continue using it. Although, to be fair, the same thing is true of Bladewind. It's just that it's unlikely that we'll be using it against the Ogres. In particular, Cascading Firecloak and Flaming Sword of Ruin for you. And Indomitable Will... And hard to hit for you because you don't need blade master right now because you have spiteful to get the extra melee attack all right uh, let's do it cinematic battle obviously medium casualties apparently the biggest threat by far on the field is those lead belchers so let's focus them down All shall suffer. Well, it's not quite misery for all, but it's, uh, well, it's in a similar vein. Oh, I like this lighting. It's a, it's a very orange, but it, uh, it is still quite nice. Anyway, here we go. I was, uh, I was hoping that we'd get to fight, uh, uh, to fight Torox, but I guess we'll have to contend ourselves with the uh, with the ogres of the flame gods i was trying to remember the name of the uh, particular faction here and uh, this is the early portion of the campaign after all so it's not surprising that our battles will be uh, relatively easy right off the bat but then they will ramp up as we go anyway we've deployed our army in uh, neat little ranks here and are going to uh, march towards the enemy while we annoy them with our single unit of cold one chariots Really, this thing is just here to uh, get a little bit of range damage in the hopes that we can get the enemy army moving towards us and thus separate themselves from those lead belchers, though frankly I doubt that that is going to work out. Looks like we can, however, get ourselves a nice little charge into the enemy, uh, uh, into the enemy Noblar trappers, and the enemy AI is actually going to counter us uh, by popping the cascading fire cloak from its fire belly on said, uh, on said trappers. This actually is not so great for the cold one chariots as well because they have that uh, trapper effect on them noblar traps which reduces their speed and thus allows the enemy to chase them however the fact that the enemy is using its 
sled belchers on the chariots is not necessarily a bad thing by virtue of the fact that it's allowing the rest of our army to approach. Uh, the ogres are whacking away at our cold one chariots and we're actually going to withdraw them off the screen which is right here at the edge of the map and they will afterwards be safe. Anyway, the rest of the battle is about to be joined. We are going to open up our own fights by popping a, a burning head which you've already used to such great effect throughout this campaign so far and try to mow down a few of those nobblers but with that there we go not going to do too crazy damage but decent enough just like our first uh, battle in the campaign malik is going to walk right through the basic ogres and nobblers completely ignore them and not care about them as they are beneath him and will instead walk towards the biggest threats on the field which are the lead belchers as well as the enemy fire belly he's going to pop a, a chill wind right through this enemy blob of nobbler trappers and regular nobblers and looks like he did a very decent damage there and continues heading towards the lead belchers otherwise the rest of the army is engaged kuran leads our unit of black guard against the ogre bulls in the hopes that we can kill them off quickly and then move towards the enemy lord here while malekit deals with their mage and their range units Alrighty. I do think that what I've done with the graphics does make the units look a lot better. I don't think it does as much for the terrain, because I think the trees look a little bit worse than they used to, but I really like the way that the units look. It looks very fantastic, or at least more so than vanilla graphics do, and uh, I kind of like that. Plus, uh, the colors really pop nowadays, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd still like your guys' continued opinion as we go about the graphics and stuff as it is important. And plus, I wasted so many hours trying to figure that out that I, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of invested in it. Anyway, looks like the flanks are doing fairly well. The bleak swords see off a unit of nobblers and uh, trappers. Looks like uh, Malekith has engaged the enemy uh, fire belly and the lead belchers as uh, we were planning to do so, and has in fact popped his tormentor sword, stopping the enemy slaughter master in his tracks and allowing Kuran and the black guard and some dread spears to close. Otherwise, it looks like the magic damage has done quite the number on the enemy army and we can see lots of the nobblers at, tr at least routing ogres are in some places still fighting but in some places also routing as well and malikas is going to pop that uh, blade wind right in front of the runners it's going to clip the enemy lead belchers but otherwise any nobblers that uh, are trying to escape would have had to move through it oh, lovely all right, and the lead belchers can fire no more. I'm sure they did a decent amount of damage to our range units while they were able to fire, but now Malekith has them. Really too bad we won't be able to get them in our armies, at least not from this uh, faction. Maybe if... Uh, ooh, there is potential wherein we confederate Loke here, take over Cathay, and then right afterwards, uh, confeder or not confederate, align ourselves with Greece's gold tooth. There's certainly potential there, and maybe still be able to get uh, access to those ogre units. Anyway, as we can see, Malekith now in command of more Dread Spears and Black Guard have surrounded the enemy fire belly who is in pretty bad shape. Well, actually, he's reasonably okay. Wait, you know what? He's not in bad shape. The enemy lord is in bad shape. Ah, yes. Kuran has defeated the uh, Slaughter Master. I remembered one of the heroes here uh, was uh, routing, and it's this one. Otherwise, the bounce power is about 90% in our favor. The ogres continued to fail to try to move towards our main stack, and the battle will be decided once we kill the Fire Belly and the remnants of these Noblars here. There we go. Just enjoying the uh, enjoying uh, the spectacle. Alrighty, and it looks like we are going to send a fireball towards the enemy as they try to come back. More fire bellies, or fire bellies now. Uh, lead belchers brought down by the fireball, and it looks like more of the enemy uh, nobbler trappers escape, and I believe with that, the enemy army will shatter. Well done, Malekith. I think he did a fantastic job in this particular battle, essentially just forcing the enemy to, uh, uh, to commit both its fire belly and its lord 
to try to see him off or prevent him from annoying those lead belchers. But since we didn't have the cold one chariots, we really needed him to hold those lead belchers down. Well done. A close victory. A little bit of damage, I'm sure. But at the end of the day, the place is, uh, uh, the place is still ours and we should be able to heal up quite nicely anyway. Alrighty, a very nice battle. Malekith maintained pretty much close to full HP. I love the way that we've been uh, uh, we've been making use of Malekith himself in these few battles, uh, both last episode and this one, where he sort of just like walks through the ranks of the enemies arrogantly, completely unsupported uh, by his own army, and just starts laying into the enemy uh, lords, heroes, and generally high value targets. We got ourselves a scroll of black horror from that. Arnzapel's black horror is. Is a wind spell that uh, oh, we should be able to make use of to make this army a little bit stronger and decent amount of slaves and treasury as well lots of fun battles so uh, it's a win in my book we're gonna loot an occupied built to heal up to get the slaves as well and uh, we'll be trading this territory away anyway so oh, why wouldn't we uh ward save furion swell and just out of curiosity how much is this worth to you, my friend? <laughs> Shrock tech mount. Uh, 40... Oh, oh, that's fantastic. Look at that. We can get both a trade agreement and a defensive alliance at once for trading it. And that will allow us to heal here as well. And... Hmm. Now we do want to attack Shrock tech mount camp. I guess the question is whether we want to do this immediately or not. Or do we want to wait a turn? I'm just a little bit wary of the bonuses from doing that of disappearing if we uh, if we wait a turn for some reason like something changing and i don't like that very much hmm. all righty anyway let's let's do it right now let's do it right now i like this idea uh you're gonna leave the place yes it's going to cost you you're going to go into dark channeling to regain your mana fury on you're just going to stand right there as well and oh right you don't need this i'll give the evil choir master <laughs> Uh, every time. Uh, Talisman of Protection to Malekith, as he likes to do that whole uh, angry walk towards the enemy. We're going to pop you into Dark Channeling as well. And then we're going to trade Shrock Tech. We're going to... Oh, wait. Out of curiosity, Temple of Cain is worth 127. Okay, he's not giving that up. Uh, not easily, anyway. Shrock Tech for trade and defensive alliance and a little bit of cash. And wait, wait, wait. We do have military access view. Yes, yes. Perfection. Absolute perfection. Moving up to plus 107, and Grom Brindle is now our ally. Best friends are reunited at last. Ah, oh, fantastic. Well, we'll let the whole Malekith being the architect of the War of the Beard leading to both the decline of the uh, High Elves and partially, if we, uh, while ignoring Mazda Mundi's contribution, partially the decline of the Dwarfen Empire as well. But anyway, with that, I think this is the perfect note to end this episode on, so I'm going to call it here. Uh, if the threshold is reached, we'll do another episode later today as well. Uh, Ava here will most likely be defending Grand next turn against Valkyrie's Onslaught, and I don't know if she can win, but she's certainly and going to give it a try. She does have a decent amount of uh, defenders here. Otherwise, Malekith is done here, so he'll go through Shrokdak Mount Camp and up north to start conquering the Mung and Valkia and retaking the territories of the uh, uh, of Grand. Once again, you guys let me know about confederations or what you think, but my inclination is to actually confederate Harganeth first, because essentially they would create a contiguous empire with us. Once we have Grand and all of this, Federate them and then start marching with Helebron this way to fight Chaos, whereas Malekith fights Nagareth down here. I think that's what I'm inclined to do, and then we'll leave Rakarth or Lok here. We'll leave Rakarth or Lok here to be confederated second. But I'm open to suggestions. Anyway, more Malekith to come, misery for all, all glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.